Hello, it's Parm King, the Dungeon Master for Legends of Barovia, a Curse of Strahd campaign. And today I'm going to talk about prepping your NPCs for the game. This is one of the most critical things we need to do as our Dungeon Master because we need to know not just the stat blocks, but we need to know about playing this character, the flavor text, its relationship it will have with the party, the rumors and background information. Now, Curse of Strahd is, is a very heavy NPC-oriented game, and there's a lot of political intrigue and backgrounds and quests that interweave together, and there's no better place than Velaki, where there's intrigue, political intrigue, relationships with Strahd, and players and characters are all woven together. Now, I'm going to go over some simple tips on how I prepare each of my NPCs for the game, and it helps me also uh, really get to know how these NPCs interact with each other. The first thing I do is, is whether you're using a piece of paper or I use one of these um, writing pads, and just write down a bunch of notes as I read through the uh, Curse of Strahd campaign. So, first recommendation, read through the entire campaign book first. Number two, go to Reddit. There's a lot of stuff on all of these campaigns and adventures. And read about some of the flavor texts and some of the people things that other people have done. So I spend a lot of time on the Curse of Strahd Discord channel, the, the Curse of Strahd Reddit, and read as much as I can. There's some great DMs, some people out there with some great ideas. Now, let's talk about setting it up in Foundry. The first thing I do for my actors is I create folders for each location and I color code them. So orange are places that they've already been and then green is where they currently are. And then I have one which is just Brovian NPCs and main NPCs. Then I have one down here which is just my players. So I can always reach into my players including right now Irina is an NPC that's traveling with the group. So I can pull these in really quickly. Now we're going to talk, I'll just use one as an example. My players are now in Velaki and what I've done is every location within Velaki I have set up a separate folder. So the Vacher family has their own folder. Now we're going to look at um, Lady Vacher and I'm going to bring her over here into the screen. Now there's some important things that you need to think about as a DM, especially on the Foundry system, because if you don't set this up right, you can have some leakage of information by accident to your players. So the first thing before you drag a character onto the screen, open up the character from your Actors tab, and I'm going to tell you why. You want to first check right away your token. And the reason I want to say you want to check your token is because once you drag the token to the screen and the characters can see the token, they might be able to see the token name. Now, what happens a lot in Curse of Strahd and other campaigns is what you'll do is something like this. I'll demonstrate it that what I'm concerned about here. So let's say I'm going to create um, uh, a humanoid um, assassin. So I have a generic humanoid assassin that I've pulled down using VTT assets from D&D Beyond. So I make a duplicate of this and I'm going to drag him down, let's say, into my Velaki folder. And so now I have this, this assassin down here who's a copy. And then I open it up and I call my assassin, uh, you know, Jim. And he, I just want him to be a town villager. And so I just call him Jim. Let me get rid of this other stuff in the background. So I've got this character named Jim. Now secretly, secretly, he's an assassin, but I don't want my players to know about it. And let's say I even load up a nice photo of Jim. I found this, this uh, photo of Jim here, and let me just pull one up. Uh, NPC, something that's non-threatening. Here is Jim. Really unthreatening looking, looking guy. Um, I go ahead and... Uh, Make him into a nice little, you know, Jim the lovable bartender guy. He doesn't look like a threat to anybody, but secretly he is an assassin. So we've got Jim set up here. And we're all happy with Jim, right? Now let me show you what's going to happen. So I've got Jim here, and I'm going to drag him into a scene. I drag Jim into the scene. I'm ready to go with my player, players. But what do my characters see as his token? Token name is Assassin. So because I didn't go in and change the token name first, if this display name is set up to hover or always on, and it's also token disposition, it's going to be hostile, they're going to see all those things, 
right? And if I and so let's say I go in here and go, oops, I made a mistake. I'm going to go in here before the game starts, update my token. I'll change his name to Jim in here. I'll put his name on uh, all all the time, and I'm making him super friendly. And oh, good. So now everything's fine. And, and it says Jim here underneath here, and he's got a he's a friendly disposition. And I think I've saved myself. But you haven't really, because what's happened is you've only changed the name of the token in the game, in the scene. The original token over here, if I drag in another Jim, guess what this Jim's token's gonna say? Assassin. That's right, so you have to remember to make sure that you change the token uh, from the character in the actor sheet before dragging them into play. So let me just get rid of the two gems here and we'll go on to talk about uh, Lady Fiona. So I'll, I'll open her up and I'll show you before I did this, I went ahead and I put her name in the token. I put her, her uh, display on hover. What I like to do for the named or important NPCs is I'll put the name on hover. Now, you may want to turn it off until they're formally introduced, but you want to turn it on hover. And why do you want to turn it on hover or at all for your players? Now, one of the things that's difficult for your players to do is you know the story of Curse of Strahd really well. You've read through the campaign. You know all the characters, everything that's going on. But your characters don't know anything. They're meeting people for the first time. And a lot of the names in Curse of Strahd are kind of complicated. There's a lot of NPCs and the Vokker family. And, and uh, you have all these, you know, the Vistani and the, the Burgermeister and all that. So what I like to do is after they're introduced, I like to put their name on as always or on hover. That means the next time they run into these characters or maybe later on, that name, not just the token, but that name is familiar. I like to put the token disposition on neutral and make sure the vision is set to at least dim 60 and the token has vision. So make sure you do that first before you drag your character into play. Now the second thing that I do is I have a module which I recommend. This is a module if you're a DM and you're using Foundry and you don't have this module, go out and get it right now because this one is going to say it's so simple but it's going to save you a, big, a bunch of headaches. It's called GM Notes, and what it does is puts a little note tab on everything from scenes to journal notes to characters where you can click on it and it just opens up a page which you can pull descriptions in from a scene or in from a journal note or transport it back to like the biography or to the journal note. I keep everything in my GM Notes, and I do this for two reasons. There are some times where you might want to share a journal entry or share something with a player, and they're going to see everything that you put put in there. In GM Notes, there is no way the players can do that. So I just use everything. I don't use any of the biographies. I don't do anything in the journal notes that I don't want players to see. I put everything in my GM Notes. So the next thing I like to do for my character, especially if you're playing a name campaign like Curse of Strahd, is put in here the background, some stuff about the family, the stuff about the party, info that they may have or share with other people. And right here now in the game, you're able to, while you're playing it, you don't have to look up anything or any of your notes that you've written. It's all right here in your GM note. And so I always like to start off a little bit background of family history, some things that are going on. She has some family members. Here her two sons are kind of drunk, kind of trust fund kids. I like to rewrite some of the stuff in my own words so that when I'm uh, narrating to my players, it's in my own kind of vernacular and not just a copy paste. Um, I put in some info on others. I have a couple of characters that don't exist in Curse of Strahd NPCs that I've added, such as Falcon von Habsburg, Vasily von Holtz, Anya Trevally, you know, and these are particular relationships that Lady Fiona has with these people. And so she's gonna, these are things that she'll say about them to the players. I also put in here how she'll attempt to deal with the player. She's going to try to win favor. She wants to oust the Baron. She'll push the truth or attempt to manipulate players. These are all the notes that is important and relative to her. So again, read the campaign and do this. Now, there's a fast way that you can do this. You can just go ahead and click in Curse of Strahd uh, right in the game and copy and paste stuff. So remember that the in the D&D uh, &D Beyond, all of this information is available. So you can just say, I'm gonna copy and paste this right here and just hit Control C, copy, jump right back into her thing and paste it right here. And just click here and say, I want to just paste it. 
and hit control V and it's pasted right in there. You can change the formatting really quick by just clicking this. It's all done. In fact, if you want to reference saying, hey, I want to go ahead and reference back to the this particular link, the Walker House link, I'm just going to hit control copy the link and I'm just going to put a link in here and say, you know what, I'm just going to put a URL link and I'm just going to call it uh, display link uh, D and D beyond uh, Walker. Vaka. Vakra. I have a German linguist PhD playing my game and he's I'm glad he's playing because a lot of these names are you know German vernacular and he's teaching me how to pronounce these correctly. I'm still not pronouncing Vakar correctly. Um, but I'm trying. So you can just save that in there. Now you have a link right in there. I can go right to D and D Beyond and just click on that once I save it and I click on it. And it's just gonna go take me right to the D and D Beyond page. And so you can put links. Now the second thing I recommend doing is there is a lot of stuff on Reddit. Um, if I type in Reddit or hear something that I found about Levok, so there's so much stuff out there about all these campaigns. Doesn't matter what campaign you're playing, go ahead and to go to Reddit, type in the name, search Google, and I can link this. For instance, maybe there's some information here that I think is really good about her. So I'm going to hit Control C and go back to here, and I'm going to put in another link right below it, um, and just type that in there and hit another link so I can always go back and reference this and this I can just call this um, you know uh, Fiona info right and so now I've got all these links here and I can you know in game if I need to look something up I can just click on this link and go to it so make sure you can do that you can also now here's another recommendation one of the things that Curse of Straw does um, the official campaign that I think is kind of a big mistake and this is not a criticism towards the artwork but the artwork in the game is so menacing looking that I don't want to I don't want my players to see these people like let me ask you a question this lady is trying to win your trust are you gonna trust this lady she's got some kind of imp devil creature on her and she looks like you know she's you know madam hell right so you want to you know you've already shown a photo you know, don't use this as your icon because it's so off-putting. I mean, the artwork's great. I love the artwork, but you don't want your players to know about the imp. You don't want your players. To, you want your players to maybe trust this this lady. So make sure you pick out icons that are more in line. So I've picked out this icon. It looks like a very stern, powerful woman. The one thing I like to do with my icons is make sure that the for my main characters, I love the top-down kind of creatures um, and there's some great icons out there but for my main NPCs I always like to put their face in a round disc because we're gonna do a lot of theater of the mind there might not be a lot of combat and so I want to relate the name and the picture um, that they're going to be related to so all of my shopkeepers all my name NPCs have a unique photo I mean here's here's the daughter she has a unique photo this is uh, Stella the daughter um, and so I want them to have a, a face that goes with the main character. Now, if it's just a zombie or something, I'll just have a top-down, you know, one of the top-down icon zombies. And there's some even animated icons that are awesome because they're just going to, those are just the, the hack and slash normal beasts, the wolves, the zombies, the skeletons. But the main characters, I like to have a really nice face. And you want to have a neutral face or a friendly face or maybe you want a... A kind of a scary face of somebody because you want it to be menacing or threatening. So think about how you want to role play that NPC and then think about the picture or the face that you want to give to your characters because there's a lot of visual uh, information that's coming to the character and I don't want it to be off-putting. So I don't use any of the photos from the the uh, Curse of Strahd. Here's, here's the two sons. I'll show you the icons of her sons. You know, I want them to look like trust fund kids that are a little kind of arrogant and kind of snotty, right? They have some money. You know, here's her innocent looking daughter. And so I'm looking for, uh, you know, here's her, her, her aid and her kind of spy. So I want the faces to kind of resonate the message that um, I'm going to be playing um, in character these uh, NPCs. So that's the next thing, making sure that you have faces. So let's go to, back to Lady Valkyrie. Now, obviously, you want to make sure the hit points, the armor class, 
all the spells and features spell books and all that information is up to date now a lot of these characters are um, standardized characters in uh, Dungeons and Dragons you know a priest a wizard or whatever so make sure you delete all of that um, generic flavor text I go ahead and delete just the biographies out of all of these and use the or transport them into GM notes and just keep the biographies in the GM notes it just makes me you know it's extra cautious you don't want leakage of information certainly you want to double check that token you don't want it to say priestess you know uh, and then have the token disposition being hostile and all of that kind of stuff so think about those things when you're building your character so these NPC characters are going to be vitally important some facts we just went over make sure that you have token representation on each one of them from an image standpoint of how you want that character to be to be portrayed number two make sure that your token vision is set make sure the token name is correct are you going to display the name on hover make sure you set your token disposition correctly do this before you drag and drop anything into the game in order to you free, have some notes, use the GM Notes module. Put all your notes in there. Feel free to go to the modules online and copy and paste those into the the into the game into the GM Notes, and then go to like Reddit and other places and pull links in and information in there. Because you, as the dungeon master, you're you're the the actor for all of these NPCs. Um, so make sure that you get the, your notes in there properly. I hope this uh, NPC prep video, which was really simple, it seems kind of logical and simple, but I've made these mistakes. I've allowed some of the token leakage, like I turned one of them on and it wasn't an assassin, but it was something else. And my players now, not, not you know, and they metagamed it well, but you don't want to metagame, right? You don't want that leakage. And I'll share something that was really amazing. I am playing in another game right now and the DM absolutely fooled us. I mean, this one of the one of the players was actually a doppelganger, and he did such a good job of uh, avoiding any leakage of information, whether it was in notes or journal notes, because we're playing in Foundry, or in, in the token. I mean, he he protected the information token, and it was such a shock. And I mean, I grew like frustrated. But it was one of those great, amazing experiences. That session last week was one of the best gaming sessions I had because the DM went that extra mile to make sure to play it very well, was very careful about the information that he wanted to let out, played the NPCs amazingly well, and was able to shock us with a doppelganger in the game. So kudos to uh, Oleg, the dungeon master uh, in the game that I'm playing. And so we want to have those special moments, those moments where our characters and our players get frustrated or happy, delighted, sad. And we do that by being very, very tight and controlling data information, making proper representations of the characters, the way we play them, the photos that we put in, and making sure information doesn't leak accidentally. So again, over here, go ahead and make your folders of each area. Put each one of your characters into the folder. Um, use the color coding in here. It's going to help you a lot to know where your players are. Really, Dungeon Master is about preparing. And the more you prepare, the better the gaming experience will be for you and your players. This is Parm King, the Dungeon Masters for Legend of Barovia. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like the video. Please subscribe so you can have more updates. And may all your roles be critical 20s. And you know what they say if they're critical 1s. I'll leave it at that. Until next time.